All right. It is Sunday, October 22nd, 2017. Um, today I got a quick video on port knocking. It's an extension of a video I've already done in the past. So if you haven't seen that, check that out first. Um, today I'm talking about replay attacks and how port knocking is vulnerable to them. <laughs> so if you don't know what port knocking is, it's, it's a method of externally opening ports on a firewall by generating a connection attempt on a set of pre-specified closed ports. So there's a, there's a daemon running on the server or the firewall, um, and it's looking for packets that match certain attributes to arrive in a certain order from any given source IP address. And when a match of some sequence has been made, some action will then be performed, such as letting that host into the network by dynamically altering, you know, the firewall rules. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really considered security by obscurity by most, and it really is. Uh, but that's, that's beside the point. What we're trying to do is be obscure. We're trying to hide the SSH daemon uh, from being visible, which will prevent port scans, which may result in attackers trying to brute force. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, the reason why port knocking is susceptible to replay attacks is because it uses static pre-shared uh, lists of ports. So uh, I guess I should describe my setup quick. It's the same as my last video. On the left is my computer, my laptop. On the right is the server or firewall, whatever you want to call it. So if I look at the IP tables, the net filter rules on the server, uh, you'll see you know, these are just kind of some defaults that I put in. They're not defaults, but stuff that I put in. And I made a TCP and a UDP chain, which are both empty. So if I were to try to SSH to this server, I'm going to get connection refused. That's not what I want. I want to get in there. So how do we get in? Well, I have a script called open sesame and a file called ports. So ports is my sequence of ports. So I'm going to make a connection attempt on each of those ports. And open sesame is what uh, is the script that makes those connection attempts. So what we're doing is we're looping through uh, the ports file here, as you can see here. And we're using nmap to make a connection attempt on each of these ports. Once that's done, uh, it, it, the, the server will then see that and it will create a rule allowing me to SSH to it uh, and put it in the TCP chain. The new part is this down here, and this is what uh, prevents replay attacks. It's a ratchet mechanism. So if I go open sesame, knock knock, and I go IP tables uh, rules, we look at this here, we now have a rule to get in. If I wanted to SSH to it, I can get in. That's easy. Cool. So what happened here is once we're able to connect to the server, we run this script on the server, knockd rotate.py. It's just a Python script which generates a new list using, you know, high random, highly random uh, numbers. <laughs> Fuck, I can't think right now. Sorry, it, it, you, it generates this list of numbers from a couple different sources, slash dev, slash random. Um, and then it also, uh, it grabs uh, some random randomness from a website, grc.com, which is Steve Gibson's website. And then it, it, it generates this list from a couple different sources. That's all that's really important. Uh, you could probably get away with just using slash dev random. You know, that's probably overkill what I'm doing, but... Uh, you know, it's all for fun. And then once that, that list is generated, we then copy it to our client. So now the server and the client have a perfectly synchronized list of ports. Um, it's not susceptible to replay attacks in any way. I know what a couple people have done to try to mitigate replay attacks is just create a list of many sequences. So like a list of 50 different sequences but that's also susceptible to replay attacks over time. If the state of that list gets reset, for instance, if you reach the end of that list um, and then you go back to the beginning, then you're susceptible to replay attacks. Um, you know, if for some other reason it gets reset, the, the state in that list, then you're also susceptible to replay attacks. The issue is, is that it wasn't true randomness, whereas this, this is, and it's generated on the fly 
and then the client grabs it from the server as soon as it's allowed in. So I just want to point out the server will not generate this list. It will not overwrite its ports list unless the client is able to connect. There have been times where, you know, port knock fails for some reason. The server won't generate the list unless it can, unless the client, because the client is the one that initiates the regeneration and then it copies it. So anyways, I thought that was kind of cool. It's a huge, huge improvement over, you know, standard port knocking. And, uh, you know, it's things like this that I think will make port knocking more wide, widespread. And in today's world, I think, you know, that's, it's, it's necessary. Uh, there's way too many people in China and Russia and even the States and Canada just doing port scans, seeing what's open and then trying to brute force whatever is open. So this will help protect information. So it's important. All right.